this new year of 2019 Amen. to put Him first and let His Holy Spirit work in our lives and uh, that we could be drawn closer and closer to Him. Praise the Lord. Turn in your Bibles to James chapter 4, verse 13. James 4, 13. Good scripture to look at it going into a new year. Praise God. Scripture says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city, continue there a year, buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Yes. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will. How many ever heard someone say, <laughs> say that? Amen. Amen. I, want, I need to say it more. Yes. For Amen. everything. Hallelujah. Amen. But it says, For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that, but now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. So there's a group of people that were being addressed here that just had their minds on a thousand things, it sounds like. Things they wanted to do, plans for the future, and kind of just leaving God out of it. Well, we need to put God in it, don't we? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray and ask God to help us. Lord, we ask You tonight to lead us by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. I'm mean, behind the cross. I pray this Word find good ground in our hearts. Let us draw closer to You. Putting You first, Lord, in 2019. Lord, we just give You the praise that we're here tonight, that the lights are on. Yes. And Lord, we just give You the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. God has everything for us. You can have a wish list of what you want to happen in 2019. We could all get down, well, I'd like this to happen. I'd like that to happen. You know, and and things we'd like to avoid and not see happen. I always say, it's my prayer, the Lord keep us from the funeral home. I always say that prayer. Because, uh, you know, I don't really like the funeral home. And uh, especially when someone goes earlier than they're supposed to. That's right. But you know, in a year, what's to say what happens? But God is the answer to all things. Yes. He has a big bowl of answers. <laughs> if you could just say it like that. Uh, he has the answers that we need. Every burden, every thought, a worry, what, what's going to happen here, what's going to happen with my kids, what's going to happen with my grandkids. He's got the answer. And so we've got to be on fire for Jesus Amen. so that He will help us in all areas of our life. Hallelujah. Problem is in the world today, we just don't have time, it seems, to put God where He needs to be. Mm -hmm. He needs to be out front. Yes. He needs to be in control. Yes. Oh, but a lot of people like to live their life with a little dab of God. Just a little dab will do you. Right. <laughs> just yeah. enough to say, I went to church. Just enough to say I'm religious. Just enough to say, well, I'll go to heaven one day. But I'm here to tell you, God wants us to live more abundantly than just that. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants our cup to be filled. And not only filled, but He wants you to be overflowing with His Spirit and power in this service tonight. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Here this scripture says to us about talking about your tomorrow, what you're going to do, 
A lot of plans, a lot of thoughts. Uh, you know, that's where we're at tonight with 2019. What's going to happen? I know I've seen people that have left God out of the equation and everything just come crashing down. Mm -hmm. I've watched people that it just seemed like they had to work more and more and more, but they weren't giving to God. And to the point where they even took Sundays and I got to work Sundays now. But it got worse and worse and worse and their debts got worse and worse and worse and they weren't paying their tithes, they weren't giving in the offerings, they weren't giving their lives to God. They took the Lord's day and worked on that day. I want to tell you something. It will steal from your life. Amen. It will come like a thief. Those things that aren't given to God. I've seen them put it in their pocket and it's just like there's a hole in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's up on the ground. And uh, it's like it just bumble, you know, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And the problems come more and more. A surrendered life in God uh, will give you blessings. Right. A surrendered life to God will make your tomorrow fall right in place. Right. He'll give you wisdom to make the right decisions. You need A's in school? God has a whole world of A's. <laughs> Amen. 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 I didn't seem to find that. But, <laughs> but I graduated. Hallelujah. Thank God. He has a diploma for you. Is that the problem? Is it money? Is it a promotion? Is it another job? What is it? A healing? Hey, God has it tonight. Hallelujah. He can bless us. He has our tomorrow in His hands. It will put him first. I don't want to go without God. Remember Moses? He said, Lord, you don't go with me. I'm not going. <laughs> he just had a little Amen. fit there with the Lord. And you're not going with me. I'm not going. Jesus. Boy, shouldn't that be our life, our prayer, and our daily lives? Oh, God, go with me today. Yeah. Go with me in that commute to work. Go with me in the, on the drive on the interstate. Amen. Go with me. Oh, put your angels about me. Amen. Amen. We are living in a reckless world. We need His protection and His help. So whatever worry, whatever we have for tomorrow, oh, let's put God. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, when you put God first, uh, you will be misunderstood by your family. <laughs> you know that? Amen. You're taking time. You shut the TV on. Kids want to turn it. I'm reading my Bible. Don't turn that on. <laughs> you know, they're going to get mad at you. Or, uh, you know, it's church. We're going to church. I didn't want to go to church. Thank God Maverick wanted to go to church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But not all the kids want to go to church, do they? And uh, but, it, but you taking that stand, you get misunderstood. I think it's several instances in the Bible. There's Mary and Martha. And, and uh, Martha got all worked up. Because there she's trying to serve people in the house and there's Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. She's taking in uh, uh, what seemed Martha was upset over it. You know, our spiritual mood sometimes upsets people. Mm -hmm. When you fast mm -hmm. and everyone else is eating <laughs> and uh, Mom, why aren't you cooking tonight? <laughs> Well, I'm fasting. Our, our decisions affect other people. Never forget. I've told it before. My grandfather dedicated himself every Tuesday to fast. He made this commitment in his life. And so Tuesday, it didn't matter. That's what he did. And so 
he went on this vacation with us. I'm just 12 years old, you know. I'm not thinking of spiritual things. And there he is. And we're traveling in miles to travel and uh, through the heat. And, uh, and here, you know, it come time to eat. Well, I mean, I, I think we were in Texas or something like that. It was boiling hot. And so we all go into Pizza Hut. We're going to eat pizza. And here's my grandfather sits in the car with the door open and sits there the whole time. And how in the world can you enjoy pizza when you see your grandfather in his 80s out there roasting? And uh, I'll tell you, it left an effect on my life to see uh, someone choosing spiritual things. Amen. My heart breaks tonight for our young people. You know, um, certain things that we were taught when we were young. I don't know what's happening, but somehow we're not transferring that. You know, we're not transferring that. And I say that with my own son. It's not, something's happening, it's not getting in. And uh, they need to know to read the Bible. Our children need to know the Bible. Amen. God's Word. Amen. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. It's so valuable for their lives. That's why we need a revival. A revival, my dad tells me when he was young. How the Holy Ghost came down in their little missions church in Virginia. He was just probably four years old and his sister it, the power of God just come down in a place and I mean people were filled and speaking with tongues the kids were speaking in tongues and 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 my my uh, dad was kind of going along with it but he had a grandma that was kind of watching him and uh, and so these girls you know, these young children are receiving the Holy Ghost and they're speaking in tongues and, you know, she was bearing witness. It was real with them. But my dad was kind of going along, maybe like Maverick Wood or something, and kind of imitating, you know. And Grandma got a hold of him and said, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she grabbed him. <laughs> set him straight real quick not to just be imitating you need to seek the real thing hallelujah and uh but i think what a what a powerful thought oh if god would come down on this little church Amen. and fill now with the holy ghost Amen. be slain in the spirit Jesus. oh my goodness i mean i think we break out in revival Amen. to think of our children receiving God's Word to have a desire and a thirst, a hunger and thirst after the things of God. I just did a service where it was a big church and uh, I had done a men's conference for that church and they did camping and all and I spoke several messages. Well, there were two boys that were in those services years ago. So they were little children when they heard me speak at this men's conference. And I thank God any effect, you, praise the Lord, any effect your life is having on someone else. That's right. Amen. You know, we are examples, you know, that pass down this to our children. And so, um, when I spoke, I came back and just spoke a couple weeks ago down at this church in Baltimore, and I gave the invitation, and two teenagers come out of the balcony and came to the altar. And uh, I didn't know it, but it was the mother. She started hooting and hollering you know, and praising God that her kids had come to the altar. Amen. But something they remembered from before, something had touched their life, and they were feeling the drawing of the Holy Spirit. And, and people came up to me after the service and said, we've been praying for two years for those two to give their lives over to Jesus. 
And uh, man, we've got to pray for our children. We gotta pray for them. We gotta pass this thing down. Amen. I believe 2019 is not getting easier. Sorry. Mm -mm. Just, just what Becky, the message that she spoke there, New Year's Eve. Those that endure to the end Amen. shall be saved. What are we gonna have to endure? about men's pantyhose and, and all these things. NBC or ABC, I think, celebrating this boy that is a transgender and we're celebrating his freedom and what he wants to be. He dressed drag. And he dressed like a woman, drag, they call it. Our kids are in a world that we cannot touch ourselves. My son's phone is locked. I don't have his number. <laughs> He's got his own phone now. Amen. When it was under our roof, <coughs> it was under us. And we had control of it. And we could shut it off if we wanted to. But they come of age, don't they? They're going to make their own decisions. Now his phone's locked. So all I'm begging for, God, Holy Ghost, get in their business. Amen. <laughs> Get in their business and I just pray they'd be so uncomfortable if they're into the wrong thing. Amen. I don't know what they're into, but I know it's pretty bad what's out there. That's all I know. That's right. And it's very easy to have a hardened heart in this day and age we live in. That's right. And just our kids themselves, what they can be exposed to just puts the fear up and down <laughs> my spine. What can happen. And, uh, we got to pray for them. Hedge of protection about them. And my prayer, you know, I, I really feel, you know, I mean, just feel things are coming to a head. We're seeing this evil progress on the earth and just a total uh, moving away from common sense. Amen. New York State just passed, you know, that you don't have to have a gender just on your birth certificate. There's an extra spot. There's an extra spot there. You, whatever. And uh, so there's states going into this and I don't understand it. I don't know how a, a human being, all I know is what they filled them with with Hollywood. I don't know. I don't know what's turned this on to this kind of crazy thinking. But one thing, it's a lack of God's Word. Yep. Amen. Amen. People don't know the Bible. People don't know what God's Word says. So we're the ones that have to say, God, bring us closer that something would pour down into our loved one's lives. That they could sense the Holy Spirit more in me in 2019 that I take a stand for God's Word. Hallelujah. What happened when Martha complained? Jesus said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. One thing. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you know how it feels when there's pressure to serve somebody and you're hoping everything's just right. I, I know that feeling. Trying to help Becky get ready for a Christmas Eve gathering, you know, and we're behind, and you know, people are going to start coming over. We all got to chip in and do a part, even Matthias making cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and you're feeling the pressure. Can you imagine? I mean, here's the King of Kings right in the living room. And, uh, and there's tension. Martha's all, all worked up. Mary's not helping me. 
there she is, just taking in the things of Jesus. What happened with Hannah when she was crying in the temple? I remember one woman saying the church she went to one time, she went up to the altar before church. She wanted to pray some before the service. And someone wasn't used to that. They, they thought she was sleeping up there. <laughs> thought she would knelt down to sleep. They didn't even know that what prayer was. And uh, here's Eli. He, he should have known. But he called her drunk. What are you doing with that wine? What are you, you quit, put that wine away from you, I think is what it says. Amen. And, uh, but she, she was seeking something else. So even the priest didn't recognize so he could be in, uh, misunderstood by the priest. She, she had another thing in her heart. And then she explained to him what was going on. And so our desire for God is going to stir things up. For one, the devil hates it. Do you think he wants you any closer to God? Do you think He wants you to avoid troubles in your life? Prayer can help us avoid trouble. Amen. Prayer can help us to receive visions from God. How many times in the Bible was something revealed in a dream? Or a vision? And I know we got some people who have those kind of gifts. Well, if you have that kind of gift, ask God to use you more in those things. The gifts of the Holy Spirit so that it could edify this body. Amen. So that it can keep us from making wrong decisions. Many times God has spoken to me and I felt like I was not supposed to go in this direction. That He helped me. Many times I feel He's woken me up and spoken to my heart about a certain thing that I needed to go in a different direction Amen. with. Amen. And He gives us that direction. Everything is available for us for 2019 to help us get through and endure to the end. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God for that. God. Even Peter found himself, Jesus found himself <laughs> being uh you know, looked at with the wrong uh, direction as he shared what he was going to go through. Peter didn't like that. He didn't like the sound of that. No, Lord, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Jesus rebukes him and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> when you have God's vision, when you have God's spirit, when you're being led, uh, People are not going to always understand it. But we cannot break under that. we got to go with what God has shown us Amen. and what He tells us to do. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't want to be an overbearing person, but I am going to put pressure Amen. on my Amen. son. He's my only son. That's right. I want him to go to heaven. Amen. I want him to serve God. Amen. I don't want him to just be religious. I want him to have an experience with the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want him to uh, sense the love of God. Yes. And so there's that balance of correction plus no, let, he's got to know he's loved. The cross of Jesus Christ is love. Yes, Hallelujah. Is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what He has poured out upon us. So whatever we're going to face, whatever you're thinking about, I like Isaiah 40, 31, you know? <clears throat> Are you weak? You know, He'll renew your strength. Praise God. <laughs> you tired tonight? Maybe something didn't come. They were pretty tired. Well, uh, where's our strength come? Our strength comes yes. from the Lord. I know if I give to God and put Him first, He's definitely going to lift me up and give me what I need. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Praise the Lord. You want to fly? You can mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what the Scripture says. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. There's a place in God He will keep you. He will help you and help you through every part of your life. And uh, I'm challenged tonight. I want to get closer to the Lord. I want to pass something down. And uh, you know, you talk about your parents, how they serve the Lord. I've heard the stories and, and things that they experienced in God. Well, what am I going to leave behind? What are you going to leave behind? Amen. Hallelujah. We had a wonderful pastor in Bernard. Amen. And look what he left behind. We can tell story after story after story. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, and things that happened in his life, he's left that to us. Now we we got to let this happen to us and, and pass it on. Hallelujah. Let, them, let the kids know, hey, they meant business with God. They meant business with God. He will bless you. Remember, God has that big bowl of answers for you. Hallelujah. Stay close to Him, and He will lead you through 2019, and we'll have something to rejoice about if He tarries to 2020. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand tonight.